In this short video, we're going to talk about the geometry of Euclidean spaces. Now we've already touched on this. We've learned about the representation of vectors as arrows, and we saw how we could add vectors or form a linear combination of two vectors uh, graphically. So let's talk about parallel. Certainly we have a geometric idea of parallel, that the two vectors are going in the, uh, along parallel lines. Right? They don't necessarily have to be pointing in the same direction. One could be pointing in the opposite direction from the other, but you have the notion that they lie on parallel lines. And our definition of parallel vectors says that they are scalar multiples of each other. And as a special case, we consider the zero vector to be parallel to every vector. Let's look at the length of a vector in R2. Our idea of representing the vector as an arrow is going to motivate this definition. First of all, the notation. Uh, we use these double bars, like double absolute value signs, to represent the length of a vector. And it's just going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So just some reminders here about uh, vectors. When we draw them as an arrow, it has a tail and a head, or the tail is the initial point and the head is the terminal point. So let's use our definition and try to understand where this definition comes from. Well, we've seen this vector with components 4, 10 in a previous video. That means I can draw a right triangle with one leg 4 units, the horizontal leg, and the vertical leg 10 units long. And so if I wanted to find the length of the hypotenuse, which would be the length of this vector v, I could use the Pythagorean theorem. I could say that the square of the hypotenuse is the sum of the squares of the legs, or that says that the length of the vector would be the square root of the sum of the squares of the legs. And the, the lengths of the legs are the components of the vector. And so in this case, I uh, get 4 squared plus 10 squared, that's 116. And when I simplify radical 116, I get 2 times radical 29. So in general, again, just by drawing a right triangle, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of a vector. And I can do the same thing in R3. And in fact, we can just extend this formula to any number of dimensions. It's just going to be the length of the vector is the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So even if I have n components, I'll just square each component, add up the squares, and then take the square root to find the length. Now there's a lot of different uh, terminology for length of a vector. It can be called the magnitude. It could also be called the size of the vector v, or the norm of v. Though you should be very careful with the idea of norm. Norm does correspond with length, but norm is, has a broader definition than just the length of a vector in Euclidean space. Some really important properties of the length of a vector is that if you multiply a vector times a scalar k, what happens to its length? Well, its length gets multiplied by the absolute value of k. And why do we have to take the absolute value? Because length can never be negative. And in fact, the length of a vector can only equal 0 uh, if and only if the vector is the 0 vector. 
And so the length of a vector is also a scalar. So as opposed to vectors, where we really only have at this point uh, addition, subtraction, and multiplication by scalars, the norm or the length of a vector is just a scalar. So you can do any scalar operation with it. You can multiply two lengths, divide two lengths, raise them to an exponent. Those all make sense. So let's look at a couple of examples. Um, very simple formula, but let's see if we can take advantage of the properties to make the calculation simpler. So our vector v has components 5 eighths, negative 3 eighths, 1 eighth, and 1 eighth. And our vector w has components 84, 21, 21, 21. And we should see a pattern there. What we're going to do is find a common factor among all the components in each vector. And we'll factor that out and then use this property of lengths. This is what I mean. I can factor 1 eighth out of the vector v. And the components that are left over would be 5, negative 3, 1, 1. So the idea is I want to find the length of the vector that's left over, which has integer components. I'll find that length and then multiply that length times 1 eighth. That is, I'm going to take 5 squared, negative 3 squared, 1 squared, 1 squared, add them all up, take the square root, and then multiply that times 1 eighth. And uh, if we add these together, I have an extra plus sign. Sorry about that. If I add these together, I'm going to get 36. Radical 36 is 6. And 6 over 8 simplifies to 3 fourths. Now, in vector w, the common factor is 21. So instead of dealing with rather large numbers, now I'm dealing with 4, 1, 1, and 1. I don't even need a calculator. I can calculate the length of that vector. It would be uh, radical 16 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. And that'll be, have to be multiplied by 21 to get the length of the vector w. And so uh, 16 plus 3 is 19. So the length of the vector w is 21 radical 19. So a uh, special type of vector is a unit vector. And so a unit vector has length 1. And here's an example of a unit vector. It's 1 half, negative 1 half, 1 half, negative 1 half. So it belongs to R4. And if I calculate its length uh, using our formula, the square root of the sum of the squares, I get the square root of 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth, which is the same thing as the square root of 1, which is 1. Now, just as an aside or to emphasize what we learned before, we can use this property of vectors that we can factor out a common factor. So in the vector v in the previous example, we could factor out 1 half. What's left over is just 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1. And so to calculate the length of v, I could just uh, take the square root of the 1 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 1 squared plus another negative 1 squared. That will give me this 1 half times square root of 4, which is just going to be 1. Now, if you're given any arbitrary vector v, which is non-zero, right? So I should have said that, clarifying it now, any non-zero. So let me go ahead and just write that in. So given any non-zero vector v, we can find a unit vector, and we'll call that unit vector u, which is in the same direction as v. And we'll get that by multiplying by 1 over the length of v. 
So we write that as uh, u would be 1 over the length of v times v. So let's find a unit direct let's find a unit vector in the direction of v which has components 2, negative 1, 2. So I need to first find the length of v just using our formula square root of the sum of the squares of the components and that works out to be a nice integer 3. So I will just get a unit vector by taking v and multiplying it by 1 over 3. That will be a unit vector and it will be a unit vector in the same direction as v. Well, I hope you found this uh, video useful and we will uh, apply this idea now when we talk more about lines and planes and linear combinations.